Gate drops here for the second race. Then it's the MX2 in open. Was, and he's already starting to pull away. Looks like Granary in second position for Team Italy. So Barsha through. Barsha through in the second position. Didaka fighting back though for Belgian line away from him. Barsha oh, just bottoming out there in the ruts at the bottom of the jump. Van Horbeek out of seventh position. Oh, and uh, his teammate getting into problems with uh, Barsha. Trying to make a move that never looked like it was really on. And now he's in amongst it with Ken Roxon. So we've got Jeffrey Hurlings of the Netherlands leading as Barsha gets past there. So two Roxon on the MX2 machine. Hanging it out. Oh, there. Barsha. Barsha has problems on the final lap. He's got a front wheel jam, so I wonder if that's a result of the collision in this race. Almost a minute clear of the rest of the field. That'll be Kenda Dijker or Tanel Lim. Gate drops there for the final race today. Germany still in contention. Racing here, Tony Cairoli gets a start. Just in there, Barsha's teammate. Whooped out circuit here in Lommel. Oh, what is it going to be? A very, very tough moto lead already. Here's second and third. Barsha, oh, he gets it wrong. And so too does his teammate Dungey, and he goes down. Or was it? No, it was... Uh, Hurling, so Hurling's already on the charge and on the back of these guys in about four laps. So how much time does he need to find himself on the rear wheel of oh, Antonio Cairoli? Gauthier Paulin and Gauthier Paulin holds the aces at the moment. That's him there on the green Kawasaki right. He goes past the monster rig, he salutes the crowd, he punches the air with delight, he pulls a big confirmation net. Antonio Cairoli wins it for Italy. Two Jeffrey Hurling. MXGP race two is gone. He makes the move at the inside and then runs across to take away the line from the Sicilian. In there on the Volvo Yamaha. Koldenhoff in seven, Geisa eight, Paulan nine, and Lino Ratzep, Kristinov, and Futron. Strybos at the back. He's obviously been down at turn one. Well, if you're going to come and watch a Grand Prix, make sure it's the Belgian Grand Prix. Two of the finest sand riders in the world, and oh, Hurlings gets taken. Well, game on then. Cairoli needs to take a deep breath. And on his forehead there, Tony Cairoli. Oh, the mistake there, and Cairoli will lose the lead here to Hurlings. Who parks that momentum here? Oh, OK, gloves are off. <laughs> ding, ding. Round three, they both might need to take a breather here because the last 10 minutes of this race are going to be absolutely right the way to the final lap, the chequered flag. He will not give in. He their game on these 450 KTM SXFs. This operates out of the MX2 garage. Oh, big mistake there from Hurlings. He oh, oh, okay. Face plant. Eyes off of this. Just a quick recap. Further down the field, uh, Anstey now to third after the mistake from Jessica. And Hurlings gets the better. Okay. Cairoli. Oh, is he going to run it? No, he has to back out. He'll be arguing with that man. These two are testing each other. Has a 1.2 second advantage over Tony Cairoli. That's the biggest gap he's had all race. Back. So all of a sudden, we're looking at more of a four second gap here. Has Cairoli thrown in the towel? Red Bull KTM Factory Racing was 11 seconds clear of Tony Cairoli, who has. Line here between Cairoli and Hurlings at the start of this race. They were both out there, and the biggest energy finish line, and he will still hold the crown as the best sand rider in the Nearest world. camera at the back, the gate about the trot, it does. Not a good jump for the 84 this time. Kawasaki lead the way. So, as Hurlings buries his way through the field, he's got the seven. <laughs> Belandrin. Got wave jellos here, and Fevre has thrown it away. Fevre has thrown away a five second event. Oh, nice, but just wasn't able to continue that momentum. Geno making it difficult for him. We've got Wave Jellos here, who's up front, Geiser. Geiser throws it away. Oh, caught a braking bump. Geiser has a heavily smoking radiator on the right side of his Honda. As, uh, into the sand you have to keep momentum all the way around this racetrack you have to be up on the pegs or maybe cold enough actually I think it was as if they are sitting still 
ahead. Only knows one thing, and with 13 minutes to go, fractured shoulder blade. Riding oblivious at the head of the field, number 41. Three behind Jonas, four behind Fevre. How much more has he got left? How many lives has he got left? Where he was third overall. Oss in the Netherlands, where he was third overall. Round four. He's alongside and takes the lead away from three and a half minutes to go. Rolling. Just going straight on. Soon find out at the end of the straight, sector two. Geiser and Prado. Bar to bar. And he's looking like he's in the mood for second position. Hit lane. Oh, and Geiser chucks it away. Roman Fevre finally wins at Lommel. Roman Fevre and Monster Energy Kawasaki. Especially when we hear the. I'm. I'm stuck right now. I feel all the work pay off. So proud of, of my team, and uh, we're gonna celebrate tonight. Well deserved, Roman. Thank you. You know, Sandy, which is which is cool. I've been hearing a lot about this track and how um, de physically demanding it is. It's insane how uh, how sandy it is, and and kind of the difference between California and uh, in the United States. The sand is never ending. I think uh, the elevation we're at is below sea level, so.